Hi, I'm Michelle Davenport with your Vertical Hope from Faith Builders Ministries. Woo! Today I'm on the third part of the third part of the series uh, based off Ephesians 6.10 where we talk about Paul saying, Finally, he says, Finally, uh, be strong in the Lord and His mighty power. Put on the full armor of God so that you can take your stand against the wiles of the enemy. Finally means most importantly. In other words, those other five chapters, this is most important. If you don't do this, you'll never do the other five chapters. Amen? And then he says, you know what? Put on the full armor of God so you can stand against the wiles. Wiles in Greek means lies in waiting. And if you think you don't have lies in waiting, the enemy is not standing on the sidelines trying to give, uh, penetrate your mind with lies then you are sadly mistaken he is your adversary and the Bible says he is like a lion roaming to and fro in this world looking to and fro to whom he may devour and I don't want it to be you amen so today I want to sow a word into you and I want to talk about first we talked about doubt about the flaming arrow it says he, he the enemy has arrows that he shoots at us and so that that armor that full armor is supposed to uh, He's not able to penetrate it if you have your armor of God on, right? And so I break down five arrows that I believe he shoots at us. Doubt, delay, diver, division, uh, division. <laughs> defeat, distraction, and discouragement. The first one was doubt. I talked about a man that was laying in his front yard and he had a heart attack and how the Lord led me there. The delay, I talked about how God woke me up one morning and said, go apply at Kohl's. And I got the job and fascinating things happened there. And today we're going to talk about the arrow of defeat. Listen, 40 times in the New Testament, the word devil is written. And it came from a Greek word. His name is a Greek word called, it's called uh, dia bolos. Dia means through with the idea of penetration and bolos means I throw as throwing a rock, a flaming arrow till you get penetration. And so that's what he does. He just keeps throwing lies into your mind until he can penetrate the truth, until he can get the truth out of the way so he can sow his seeds of lies. And I don't want you to fall for it anymore. I want to expel the darkness was right. We're supposed to be the, the light on the hill, but how can we? If we still are living in darkness, if we still allow the enemy to come to kill, steal, and destroy, even the things God's called us to do. And so today, I want to talk about defeat. I want to tell you a story. We had a bird dog. Her name was Molly. She was awesome. She was my husband's favorite dog. And he was going out of town. He said, Michelle, I want you to take care of Molly. I love that dog. I want you to take care of her. She had a kennel in the back. He says, well, watch out for storms because she gets scared. So put her in the laundry room. Just take care of her. Make sure she has water and food and let her out to run every once in a while. I'll be gone a week. Just take care of her. I said, okay, no problem. <clears throat> well, I took care of her all week and it was beautiful. She did great. I did great. <laughs> Everybody's happy. And the day my husband's coming home, I had asked him if I could invite some friends over even though he'd be flying in that night and just getting home, he said, sure. So I invited some friends over for dinner and I was cooking and I looked out my kitchen window, which is not my backyard window where the dog should be. And I seen Molly in my front yard. And so <laughs> I mean, well, this story cracks me up. I, uh, I seen that dog out there and I was like, Molly, well, I know she can't hear me because I'm behind, I'm in the house, she's outside. So I go to the front door. I finally realized that dog ain't hearing me. And I didn't want to spook her by hollering. I go to the front door and I go, Molly. And she looked at me, y'all. She perked those little ears up, got her little tail up, and she darted. Oh my gosh, y'all. I grabbed my shoes. I started chasing that dog and it was a wintry mix outside. The wind was blowing. It was like sleeting and it was a horrible mess. Um, I had dinner on the stove and I chased that dog. Then I realized that I'm not going to be able to, to catch that dog. I'm not going to be able to, I can't run fast enough, not fast enough a bird dog. <clears throat> so, <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> this is so funny. I go back and I get my car and I, and I, uh, I jump in it and I start to chase that dog y'all in the car and she goes up a hill. She goes up into a stranger's house and their, their driveway goes up way up a hill. And I, I brought, drive my car up in their driveway like it's really steep. I jump out of my car and this bird dog goes up behind some railroad um, 
I don't know. They had like, um, I don't know, just like nails in them. It was a big old, big old, it looked like telephone poles to me. <laughs> but uh, anyway, I jumped over those. And by then my daughter had caught up with us, with us, me and the dog. And, uh, and she got caught behind a fence and I could see her and I said, Molly, Molly. And so she just kind of stood there and I couldn't climb the fence. It was a barbed wire fence. And I went around and I got close to enough to her, y'all, that I dove at her and caught her around the neck. And I don't know if I passed out <laughs> because I was practically hyperventilating. I didn't want my dog. My husband was on his way home. I didn't want the day he came home that I, got, I lost his dog. And so my daughter goes, Mama, Mama. And I kind of come to. I was like, yeah. And, and we got Molly. We put her in the car. And we took her home. We put her in the laundry room. And about five seconds later, our friends show up. And she, she comes in, and mind you, I had ran a half a mile before I ran back the other half and got my car, and then got my car, and then ran some more, all in this sleet, wind, you know, wintry mix outside, chasing a bird dog, panicking. And my friend walks in, I just get the dog, to, the dog, the bird dog put away, and she walks in, and she looks at me, and she goes, Oh my gosh, your hair looks great. <laughs> like what and she goes it looks great and I go oh okay so I proceeded to tell them the story thank God my I think I was making chili it didn't burn because I left it on through all of this and uh, I told her the story I said so that all that's all it takes to get a good hair day it's just running around in the sleet and snow <laughs> and so anyway the, my husband came home and you might be thinking what in the world does this have to do with defeat well I was feeling pretty defeated because of this bird dog making me chase it all around like everywhere you know until i finally tackled it and captured it and brought it back home and caged it you know put i we have a big old kennel inside the laundry room so that's where i put her so my husband comes home and he gets home and i, I tell you honestly i wished i would have waited 10 15 minutes but no he barely got his bag put down and i was like oh my gosh you'll never and my company's here and i go oh my gosh you never believe what happened to me and he's like what and I just wanted, I'm going to be upfront with you. I just wanted some sympathy, y'all. I wanted some compassion because I felt like I went through it, okay? Not only did I take care of this bird dog all week and did a great job at it, um, the last day I almost lose the dog. The dog could have got hit by a car. I mean, the dog was running like crazy. You know, I, it, yeah. So I began to tell my husband this story. And I tell him all about come here, Molly, at first, you know, at the front door. Hey, Molly, come here, Molly. And how she jetted and how I took off running uh, half a mile chasing this dog, realizing that I had to run a half a mile back, then I get in my car. Then my daughter, you know, when I got my car, you need to know my daughter jumped in with me. And then we chased her down to a house, had to go into a driveway, a strain, you know, the whole story I just told you. And so when I got done, I thought my husband would go, and you need to know he's a Marine. <laughs> and so, uh, a Marine, and you know what? <laughs> this is a Marine response, but it was priceless. And so I got done, I looked at him like, ah, oh, you know, compassion. You know, I just want you to have compassion and sympathy. <laughs> and he looks at me and he goes, you know what, Michelle? He's like six foot two and I'm five foot two. He goes, all you had to do was tell that dog, Molly, and snap your fingers, kennel up and she would have kenneled. I said, you have got to be kidding me. That is all you got to say after I told you this long story, seriously? But what I learned in that moment was priceless, y'all. When the enemy comes after us with his doubt and his delays and tries to defeat us in the moment that we were chasing a bird dog down the street feeling like we're never gonna catch her, you know, that she's gonna outrun us, when the enemy comes at you and tries to throw these darts of, of doubt and delay and defeat to you, I want you to say, devil, kill up. <laughs> you are under my feet. That's what the word says. You have no authority over me. I'm the head, not the tail. I go over, not under. Amen. And I want you to take authority. When you're feeling defeated, you start quoting the word of God over yourself. Don't you let the enemy come in and sow seeds of doubt and delay in you. And don't let him sow seeds of fear. And don't let him get here, get you in a position where you don't believe the word of God anymore. Because he's done penetrated your mind so much with the lies. 
Get in your word. Get in this word and learn the truth of God so you can stand against the wiles of the enemy, the lies in waiting. Amen? <laughs> Amen. Well, this is your vertical hope. And until we talk again, I bless you. Bye-bye.